In this problem, we take over the relatively uncomfortable situation that we had in the previous video. And this situation is that we're studying the full, say, full size flow over a real car uh, here. And we're studying this using a wind tunnel model, which is 20 times smaller and running considerably faster. So we're running uh, the wind tunnel at 20 meters per second down here. Um, and we have cooled the tunnel so that it's at zero degrees. And this we have calculated before is equivalent to the situation where we have a full-size car at 25 degrees running at a very, very low speed, at a walking speed of about 1.1, uh, 1.2 meters per second. And the question that we want to answer here is, if we have the situation, then when we make measurements on the small-size car here, um, those force measurements that we make, what do they mean for the real car? How do we translate those small-size force measurements into values that would correspond to the real full-size car uh, down here. And the answer to this question is, um, is, is found using force, uh, force coefficients. Physics tells us that if you have done your homework uh, of equating the fluid flow coefficients, the Reynolds number, the fruit number, the strudel number, and so on and so forth, uh, then the force coefficients are the same. In this case, we have not equated all the fluid flow parameters, but we have equated the most important of them in this case, which is the Reynolds number. And so this allows us to say that the force coefficient on the car A is going to be equal to the force coefficient on the model C, C not B. C, let me correct this here, uh, car C. Yes, providing we've done the homework, we can then use this relationship. It's not always true, it's only true when you equated the fluid flow coefficients. So what is this equal to? This is equal to the force that you measure on the real car. Um, and this force can be the horizontal force, vertical force, in any angle, as long as you use the same definition for both of the two cars. Yes. The force induced by the fluid on the car divided by one half of rho, the density uh, of the fluid around the car, uh, multiplied by a representative area on the car, multiplied by velocity squared on this. And this is equal to the same thing for the car C, the model C. Uh, and this is Fc divided by one half of rho C, Sc, Vc squared over here. What do we want in this? Well, what we want to quantify is Fa divided by Fc. We want to quantify the factor by which we have to multiply Fc to get Fa. Yeah? So we identify this, and the mathematics are not very difficult. The trick here is not to trip over your own feet and mix up the indices and put the wrong values uh, inside the equation, but the mathematics are not difficult. Fa over Fc, in this case, happens to be rho A over rho C, and then I have Sa over Sc, and then I have uh, Va squared over Vc squared, like this. Okay, let's go through them one by one. For density, we're going to use the same trick as we played in the last video, which is to say, when the pressure is the same, uh, we use the perfect gas model, and we say that density is inversely proportional to temperature. And this tells us then that we have Tc over Ta. Yeah. So I have taken the ratios of densities, and I have taken the inverse of the ratios of temperatures. The surface, the surface area is a little bit more di difficult to conceptualize because what area should we take on this car? Um, we don't even know anything about the car. We don't know the make of the car. We don't know the length of the car. Um, and there are two things worth uh, thinking about. The first thing is that uh, we don't care about any of the two areas. We care about the ratios between the ratio between the two areas. So what we want to quantify is not any of those two numbers. It is the ratio of both. Uh, second thing is that we know that the small model is 20 times smaller than the real size car. Uh, we don't know what the size of either is. We don't know the length or the height or the width of any of those um, uh, objects. But we know that any length on the small car is going to be 20 times smaller than the corresponding length on the full size car. And if that is so, then it means that any area on a small car, the area of a mirror, of a wheel, or the side view area, or the top view area, any area on that small model car will be 20 times 20 sm times smaller than the area on the full car. Yeah? It will be 20 squared times smaller than the area on the full-size car. In other words, 
SA over SC is equal to LA over LC squared. Right? Again, I'm not attempting to quantify any of those areas. I'm just trying to quantify the ratio of those two. And then I multiply this by uh, VA over VC squared, like this. All right, so the math is done, and now the only difficulty is putting the right numbers into the right boxes, which is sometimes harder than it seems. Uh, so let's take a look. We have here TC. Uh, let me uh, pull back up the, the, the pictures on the side. TC is the temperature um, on the small scale model. So it is going to be zero degrees. So I write in here uh, zero degrees converted into kelvins, 273.15 uh, plus zero. Yes, and I divide this by TA, and TA happens to be the temperature on the full size car, which is 25 degrees. So I'm going to put here 25 degrees. 273.15 uh, plus 25. And I multiply this by the ratio of lengths. And this is, pay attention, LA divided by LC, the length of the real car divided by the length of the model. And this is 20. 20 divided by 1. 20 to 1. Yes. Again, I don't know what LA is. I just know that LA is 20 times larger than LC. And so this is 20 divided by 1 squared. And then I multiply this by the velocities, and the velocities are given right here. I have the velocity for A, which is very low, uh, 1.174, and I divide this by 20, the number of meters per second on the small scale model here, which is squared, like so. And I could put this directly into my calculator, but I like to compare the size and the influence of different terms um, when I calculate things like this. And so I did this before, and it turns out to be 0.2. 916 for uh, temperatures. You see that by reducing the temperature, we have a factor of about 9-10% coming in. This is a factor of 400, uh, the second one here, and the third one happens to be a factor of 1 over 290, like this. So you can see that on the one hand, uh, you want to multiply the force by a very large factor because the car is very, very much larger. Uh, in fact, the frontal area of the real size car is 400 times larger than the area on the small scale model. But because we run the car much slower um, and the square of the speed also takes, is taken into account, we have a factor about 300 uh, taken into account here. Yes, the car is much slower, so um, we divide by 290 here. And if you multiply all of those, you get 1.263. And this says, we calculated it above here, this is FA over FC. This is the number that we wanted to calculate, FA over FC. So if you measure one Newton of force um, on the small scale car, then this corresponds to 1.263 Newtons on the real size car. Yeah? You have to add about 26% to every measurement that you make, every force measurement that you make on the small size car. So this is, once you've done the difficult part, which is the homework, which is making sure the fluid flow parameters are equivalent on both, on both models. This is how you scale force measurements from a small or large scale model compared to reality.